you down by the way, cancel culture comes for you, the vultures, they'll, they'll, they'll still give you the right in, they smell blood, it's causing people to self-censor. travel too much. I, I told you I don't get out of my, my house and my studio much. The radio show, the podcast, it's all from my house and my studio. So I get a little like Jack Nicholson in The Shining, you know, all work and no play. Remember that makes Jack a dull boy? That's me. I see those two little girls in red rum sometimes every time I walk down my hallway. So it's very good to see actual people. And I guess you all like the show because you seem to have a pretty good response to that. Thank you so much. That's where Don't Get Dead comes from, by the way. You know about that? You know about that? So I have these golden rules on my show, right? You know, one of them is one of them's a kind of a terrible one, but it's true. It's that the golden rules of the Dan Bongino show, rule number one is most Republicans up on Capitol Hill are sadly Democrats, but no Democrats on Capitol Hill are actually Republicans. But, which is sadly true. But rule number two is don't get dead. And, and where did don't get dead come from? My wife was like, hey, what are you going to do? You know, how are you going to talk about it? So I'll think about it in the car. And I had this shirt. I'm like, maybe we should explain to them where don't get dead came from in the show. So liberals are not really smart. They're, a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to say not all Democrats, but liberals are just plain dumb. They're like imbeciles. Like you have to like... Uh, me and Charlie were doing an interview on the podcast, and Charlie and I were sitting there in disbelief about how many times communism and socialism fails, and yet we have to keep coaching liberals on why this thing sucks. It's like, I don't know, 100 million body bags, starvation, I, I don't know, that's kind of a really bad resume. So they're not really that bright. So I'm a messenger guy, and I'm like, we got to punch through to liberals and make it super simple. So I thought one day, I'm like, well, what does nobody want? Everybody understands. Well, nobody wants to get dead. And I found it really be 11, but it's true, right? And I thought, what is the common theme of just about every liberal policy, right? They all help you get dead quicker. It's the most, right? Name one. I'll tell you how liberalism gets you dead quicker every single time. So I'm just in the car and I'm going through some stuff. I'm like, what do I do? What do we do? And I'm thinking, just randomly throw some stuff out, Paul. Say, energy. Okay. If you're a liberal, you are going to get dead fast on energy. Because you're probably going to freeze to death. Your gasoline car is going to go away. So I don't know if you're going to Fred Flintstone it or what you're planning on doing. I mean, I live in Florida. I see the Florida crew. We got Linda and Larry. My homies from down here in South Florida. Go, oh, is that Mike? Hey, what's yeah, up, buddy? Right up here. Hey, Mike. I'm watching hey, Mike. Hey. Yeah. Hey. I, I sleep on that pillow. No, so think about it, right? Thank you. you, got, you it's, it's 172 degrees down here in the great state of Florida in January, right? And you're going to get on what? You're going to get in your Fred Flintstone car? With it, and, and you're going to what? You're going to bike it 25 miles to your job every day? You better have a lot of damn electrolytes. Maybe an IV in your arm like this or something like that. The whole, maybe doctors on staff. This is what they want. 
Did you read about this? I'm trying to take away your gas card. This is this stuff is all real, by the way. It's not some kooky conspiracy theory. They keep piling on new rela- regulations. So you have to go buy a gas, uh, a, a, an EV car that you probably can't, uh, can't afford. They're like a hundred grand for a good one, right? But here's the kicker, how liberalism helps you get dead super fast, which is energy. They want to make these electric vehicles with these rare earth minerals and mine all this stuff. And here's like the real kick in the teeth, right? We don't even mine it here because the environmental crazies are like, no, no, no gas, but no mining either. So this is where you're like, gosh, can these people get any freaking dumber? Like, how is this even possible? So the Chinese Communist Party is like, yeah, we'll mine the hell out of our, they don't even have any environmental regulations. And then we'll screw up the environment you claim to be supporting while we move to an economy that'll help you get dead. And liberals are like, yes, this is awesome. These people are so stupid. It's like, it's hard to break through, man. You like want to shake them. You're like, you guys are nuts. Hey, what's up, man? Is, I wish it was like a Morgan Wallen concert where he grabs the phone and stuff. I love them. You guys are awesome. Man. So all these people want to do on the left, and remember this when this election comes up, it's a simple question, right? You're going to have either Trump or DeSantis or Vivek or someone versus the rotting bag of oatmeal in the White House, right? So your choices are this, get dead or don't get dead. Like, that's it. There's no option C, there's no all of the above, there's no none of the above. Those are your choices. Think about it when it comes to a very serious topic. Something I know is on your mind. Folks, this, this culture war we're undergoing right now with the left's weaponization of sexual identity politics and the, and the just endless attack on our kids. You want a society to, to collectively, ideologically get dead fast? Start corrupting the minds of the kids. Yeah, it's happening. It's happening right now. And there's a reason. I talk about this on the podcast a lot. If you want to check it out. It's on Rumble, free speech platform. I'm proud to be a part of. Yes, yes, thank you. Rumble.com, check it out. But I talk about this all the time. I don't want anyone in this room to be confused about why they're coming after the kids. There's a lot of chatter and stuff that goes on on Twitter, and people say things like, well, you know, they're all perverts. And you know what, listen, attacking kids with, with, with sexual things that are not mature enough with their brains, Certain people have taken advantage of that. I'm not telling you there aren't people who are really corrupted doing that. But ladies and gentlemen, that's not the primary reason that the left is doing this. With this war on our kids and pumping inappropriate sexual content to kids. This was the kind of stuff you were arrested for just a few years ago. And now all of a sudden it's like a mainstream position on the kooky left. There's a reason. I want you all to remember this. Don't forget it. Because if you don't understand the enemy you're fighting, you are going to tactically lose the battle because you're not prepared. You're doing this because these socialists always understood you can't have communism without the kids. You can't. Because it doesn't make sense. No one wants body bags and starvation. Everybody wants to own their private property and work for a wage. No one wants to give their stuff to other people. So you're saying to yourself, yeah, Dan's right. Like, communism sucks. I want to own stuff. I'm not giving my iPhone to some guy who doesn't work because, you know, from each according to their abilities to each according to their needs. That's crazy. So you're probably saying to yourself, too, well, if it's crazy and it kills people and starves people, then why is it still around? I mean, Fukushima told us it was the end of history when we conquered the Soviet Union, right? Reagan won 49 states. So how are we back at square one again? Wait, Bernie Sanders, a millionaire, a bit, and Elizabeth Warren, well, she doesn't even know what she is. She thinks she knows what you are? Yeah, how are we back? She's confused. She doesn't think that she should take a 23 and me or something. She doesn't get it. So how the hell are we back here discussing the ravages of communism and socialism again? And the answer, folks, because they beat us in the education system. We got our asses kicked, man. It's that simple. We did. We fell in love with the Republican Party a long time ago, and I love being a conservative. I'm so proud of it. But we fell in love a long time ago with the Republican Party, at least at the swamp level, not with you in this room. I'll take it personally. That really believe, hey man, here's our message. Tax cuts, stay away from that other stuff. No, bullshit. That other stuff is the stuff. That's the stuff that matters. That's the stuff that really matters. 
How do you have a society not anchored in God and higher values and in heart? We're arguing about tax cuts? Listen, I love the Trump tax cuts. Greatest thing ever happened to me. I love it. I will advocate for economic freedom till the day I die. But make no mistake, folks, that's not what our party's about. We have to be about saving the kids and the next generation and the education system. They stole it. They took it. They kicked us all out. There were almost no conservative teachers left in liberal states. They stole it and they took the kids from us and they weaponized instruction in the classroom to get these kids confused. Because remember, you will never have commies without the kids. They have to confuse the kids. And the way, the best weapon in this fight, the best weapon to confuse kids is to feed them something they don't understand, which creates a sense of confusion and dismay. What's the perfect weapon? Sex. Kids don't understand. They're not ready to understand. They're not, God didn't create human beings to understand that physical act up in this for a reason. It was genetically efficient. The designer, the intelligent designer we call God did it that way on purpose. Did it that way on purpose. So they feed these kids this, I mean, essentially porn in classroom, this grotesque stuff, because it confuses them. And then there's step two. Because remember, you don't have commies without the kids, right? So how do you confuse the kids even more? Once you've effectively fed them all this stuff that they don't understand at all, and you've softened them up, you tell them, hey, your parents are all fuddy duddies. Those crazy conservative parents, you know, they, they, they just don't understand. They don't understand you. And you get this sense of disillusionment. Do you see how this was all thought out? Folks, listen, man, none of this was by accident. I have dedicated my entire adult life. I walked away from a great career. I loved in the Secret Service. I, I have, although yesterday at magnetometer, you guys must have been sweating. I felt, I want to come down and run the magnetometers myself. I felt so bad. I'm like, here, just go in. Go in. I'll frisk you, whatever. Go on. But I love my job. They screwed up this cocaine gay thing, but that's for another day. So I walked away from that because I've studied these people my whole life. Nothing they do is by accident, folks. Nothing. Everything they do is for a reason. They know government sucks. Do you think they want more of your money because they believe government can spend it better? They don't want any of that. What they're doing is buying off constituencies to keep them quiet so they can enact their agenda. That's it. That's all this is. Right? And what is it? It helps you get there. Because now you've got no money, you've got no car, your friend Flintstone in it. And then you go back to say health care. Why do they want centralized government control health care? Oh, because they think government's going to do such a good job. Health care is expensive. No, no. You ever listen to my show where I do it, Clar Clarice? No, Clarice. That's not what they covet. I do it all the time from Silence of the Lambs. What is the left covet? What do they covet? Power. Power. And you will have no greater power over society when you control their money, their kids, and whether they live or die. You actually believe they think healthcare systems run by the government are more efficient? Who in this room believes that? Can we get a show of hands? Okay, it's unanimous. I don't need a show of hands because I know you're all smart. No idiot believes that. If they control the healthcare system, they control everything because they have the power to make sure you live or you die. They know full well that when you have a healthcare system run by the government, there's only two ways to allocate a doctor's time. Only two. If you can tell me a third one, I'll give you the Nobel Prize in economics. You can price it or you can ration it. There ain't no other way, folks. That is it. We live in a difficult world with difficult choices. You can pay for it or you can ration it. And then, who gets the rationing? Who gets the health care? The answer is the people with the hooks, the connected few, while you all die. That is power, man. That's real power. Listen, I, I'm running a little low on time, but I don't think I can. But anyway, <laughs> I don't want you to leave the room tonight without understanding that very simple thing, that nothing they're doing now is by accident. Nothing. The voting systems, the kids, the war on the kids, the attacks on healthcare, 
the attacks on energy, the attacks on the economy, none of this stuff is by accident. They use useful idiots to do it, and they are at war for this culture. And if you ever wanted a society to get dead, and get dead super fast, the quickest way to do it is to centralize power with swampy idiots in DC who know absolutely jack about anything going on in your life. It is the single stupidest thing I have ever heard. I, I wanna, I got about five minutes, so I'm gonna, I want to end with this because it's, it's, this is important for you in the room. A lot of you are, are turning point, generally a younger group, although I noticed that I get some people my age here too. It's really cool. <laughs> Having said that, if you're 48 like me, or maybe a little younger, or maybe a little older, I know Larry's like 25, but whatever. You look good, Larry's for 25. Larry, stand up. He's 25 years old. Larry, stand up. Look at this guy. He looks good. I may be past my turning point, but to the younger kids, really, I turned a long time ago. I'm kind of the back end now. But, you know, I went through a lot with my health and the cancer and all that stuff. It ain't a sob story. Who cares? You know, everybody's got their, really, it doesn't matter. But, you know, thank you. But it was a powerful moment in my life, and, and I don't bring it up because, uh, you know, I'm looking for anybody's uh, sympathy because, you know, when you're sitting there at MD Anderson in Houston, this cancer hospital, and I was like 46 at the time, and I had stage one lymphoma, which was pretty manageable, and you see these 13-year-old kids, you know, no hair, leukemia, stage three, four, they're dying. They wheel them in on gurneys for radiation, and you look up at God and you're like, you know, I don't pretend to understand all this, you know? I don't pretend to understand any of this, but I learned so much, you know, in that moment. When I eventually recovered from it, I kept thinking back to my childhood. And I, I, I used to love comic books. It's this kind of Manichaean part of me, the good versus evil fights, you know? I've always had that in me. And this is why I became a police officer, right? And it really brought me back to my childhood because you start to think when you come to these life-changing moments, like a cancer diagnosis, you start to think like a child. Um, you don't think anymore about long-term time horizons. Kids don't think like that, right? They think about the wiffle ball game at dinner. They're not thinking about like, what am I gonna do when I grow up? Adults do that. But when you get these moments, and I'm sure a lot of you in this room have tragically had yourself, do you notice you start to think like a child again, right? Everything's on a horizon of 10 minutes of the future. Like, holy Moses, man, I'm like, if I don't survive this thing, I'm not gonna see my daughter's wedding. You're like, what? It, you, become, you, become that, you, you, you become that kid again. And I remember I used to go to this cigar store when I was a kid, and they sell comic books, and I loved comic books. And I used to love Daredevil and Batman. And the reason I never bought Superman comic books was because Superman can never be hurt. And I thought to myself, like, I love Superman, but he's not really brave. Like, he can't get hurt, right? And I thought, like, Batman's just a dude. Like, he's got no superpower. He's got this fancy belt or whatever. Maybe he's got a my pillow. Maybe Mike gave him a slipper. But he's got some my slippers. Batman my slippers, right? That would be his superpower. But I wanted to, Batman was real to me because, folks, there's no courage, you know, without fear, right? Can we all agree? Like, there's no courage without fear. And I used to buy Daredevil, and I got to thinking after this whole bout with this disease, I got to thinking to myself, it was Daredevil, the man without fear. And I thought, no, no, no. That's totally wrong. Like, Daredevil didn't have any superpowers. He was blind and he just had this radar, but it only compensated for his vision. Like, the reason Daredevil was cool was because he was scared. We're all a little scared. And you know, that's okay. That's a gift, man. That's a gift. That, that, that failure and that fear is a gift. I wrote a whole book about it. It's called The Gift of Failure. It's coming out next month. Hope about everything I screwed up in my life. Fear is natural. Thank you. I screwed up a lot. It's a long, it's a long book. Believe me. <laughs> Embarrassing at times, but where do you go? But there's no courage without fear. There's none of it. 
So to everyone in this room, especially if I may, just for a moment, to the, to the young ladies and men out here, 25 or younger, listen, I know it's hard to be a conservative. I know. I know it's hard to be a liberty lover. I know it's tough. I mean, if you're the safest place for you, if you want safety and security, I'm going to give you some hard, some hard news right now. No fake news. Don't be a conservative. If you're looking for, you know, a soft landing in your life, don't be one of us. Because we're the renegades now, we're the misfits. And this ragtag army, listen, listen, you're damn right. We are the misfits now. We're the renegades. We are the counterculture that some of you older than the 25-year-olds remember from the 60s. That's us now. And you know what? For as much as you didn't like them, it took a little guts back then to say, hey, I don't know about this Vietnam War thing. Like them or hate them, they, just, they decided they were going to throw it out there, maybe smoke a doobie and do their thing. They were the misfits, right? Now, I don't smoke doobies. It's bad for you. Don't do drugs. Remember the Nancy Reagan egg thing? Don't do drugs thing, right? Having said that, I am begging you to please stick with us, man, because there is no courage without fear. And there is a second creation out there. <clears throat> There is a God out there, and you are one day going to have to go there with your CV resume for life. And that better have some suffering in it, because it's only through that suffering that you are going to understand real joy and real pleasure. That look on your kid's face as they hit that single to win the game. You are only going to understand that, and it is only going to matter if you intentionally put yourself through suffering and pain. God put you here to enjoy your life, but make no mistake, he put you here to suffer too. You would never understand happiness if you can't contrast it with the unbelievable sweat equity you have to put into getting through your everyday life fighting for freedom. There is no courage without fear. So go forward, embrace it, be afraid, feel good scared. That fear is natural. Fail, fall down, get back up, but understand, you are on the right side of freedom and liberty. You are the tip of the spear. And this country won't get dead if you keep it up. It's been an honor to talk to you.